Check, 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 check. Check it, it, check. Yeah. Oh. Woo! She sells sanctuary. Oh. That one, uh, that song goes out to a significant other. Yeah. Uh, a Miss Cat. Because it's Valentine's Day. So I want to give a shout out to her because we were meant to have... No, we didn't. Actually, she made plans without me tonight. <laughs> yeah. What type of Valentine's Day is that? No, well, <laughs> she, cause she had plans with um, friends. Okay. But I surprised her this like early, like at one o'clock in the morning with some flowers. One in the morning? Yeah, well, when we got back from rituals last night. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. From doing rituals or the show? <laughs> uh, probably a bit of both. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, the gathering event. The gathering event, the rituals. Yeah. yeah. That, that was, was wicked. It was good, yeah. I was so antisocial that night. Yeah, you were tired. Oh, I was tired as fuck, yeah. yeah. Um, I had, what's, a, what's a club called? Never mind, small club. Ah, never mind. Ah, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Never yeah, mind. Yeah, no, never mind, small club. What, s- what did that used to be? I don't know, but I swear I've been there before. No. I just wasn't sure. I've been there for Wham Fest before. I think I saw uh, Child Saint at the time there. Uh, who have changed their name, but yeah, that was a year ago. Yeah, I didn't even know it was there. Yeah, I've heard about gigs that like I've heard about the venue. Yeah, but I yeah I don't recall being there. I well, just I had this strange vibe like I'd been there before, like I'd known that, like I knew it, but mm. yeah. it's kind of out of the way a bit. Yeah. Um, in between Jack Rabbits. Yeah. Not too, yeah, it's not too out of the way. Mm. Yeah, but no, nah, yeah. Uh, Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah. Well, yeah. How do people celebrate it? You just buy shit? Buy flowers and chocolates and... <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I'd like, I had a, a good argument and I one I strongly believe as well is like there shouldn't be a one day to celebrate and make someone feel special. You should do that every fucking day. True. Every single day you should make someone feel special. But... Everyone will be broke if they... <laughs> yeah, if that's they true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pick, pick your battles, is what I say. Pick yeah, your battles. Yeah. Buying, buying flowers every every day yeah. would... Uh, yeah. yeah where, where, where's your significant other? Do you have a significant other? Yeah. I have a cat. Uh, that's it. No, we both have cats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm... Uh, I'm kind of enjoying not thinking about that for a bit. Really? Yeah. I'm not... I've never been one of those people that have felt... Like, if I didn't have a girlfriend, I was lacking anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, for some people, like, they, it's natural, they need it, it's part of their, the structure of their life, or they seek it out, which I totally get, but I've never found the, a pressure or a need to, like, oh, damn, I'm single, I better go out and do something about that. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. But... That's probably... I'm not saying that's good either, but that's just how I am, yeah. I think. I've well, I mean, al- f- always been like that. For me, I, I just... I love companionship. I hate being alone. That's why yeah. you know, I'm here by myself in this place. I'm like, fuck, someone come around. <laughs> like, I'm fucking... I'm, I'm, I don't want to be alone. Really? Oh, sometimes. Yeah. It can be a bit daunting. Mm. See, I, I... If someone invites me out, the most fun I have is the walk... To the venue alone, and the walk back to the car alone. Because you can do it by yourself. You don't. You're not like. Yeah, yeah. I think like that for me is the strangely the highlight. Because you think it'd be well meeting most people and going out. Yeah. But it's strange. Like the quiet walk to the car, I enjoy the most out of the That's whole. That's true. Yeah. Out of the whole. Uh, <laughs> especially if you if, even better if you are coming from a really good night. Yeah. Um, that walk alone just for 10 minutes is awesome. It is that. great. But like, I always find like in those times, especially those times, walking to or from a venue is when shit can happen. Like, it can be good shit, can be bad shit. Bad shit. Well, usually <laughs> bad shit. But no, <laughs> like good stuff happens as well. You're almost just like things you don't expect, you know, yeah. like running into someone or running. And being able to share that with someone, for me, is just like, you know, it's kind of like, you know, if you're by yourself, and you see something amazing happen, like uh, uh, like you think to yourself, did that actually happen? But when you have someone that you can actually yeah. say, oh, did you see that? Or, you know. Yeah. I don't know. It's just me. I, wanna, well, yeah, I like, you, you I like to share things with other people. You have another set of eyes that can help you out as well. Yeah. And an alibi yeah. as well. 
Yeah, but something about just putting on headphones and just walking alone, I really enjoy. Some people really dislike that. Well, that's the oh, see, like they constantly need people around them. I which is walk. I see. I've just got caught by the walking with headphones thing. That's a little bit. Of, that's a pet. I've said this before. The pet peeve of mine is people that walk around, especially drive with headphones on, mm. because they're sort of like not aware of the surroundings. I mean, and sure, like definitely, you know, you see people walking through the city with the headphones on. They're probably loving in their own world, listening to their music. But at the same time, like, dude, there's a whole world around you. Why are you so? Yeah. Where are you? Well, where could, are you right now? It could definitely be a crutch. Like, um, there's that meme, you know, headphones off, world. Wait, headphones on, world off. You know what I mean? Like how it can be escapism. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, and there's rep- like, there's definitely reports of people all over the world getting run over because they just walk onto the road yeah. with headphones on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or just looking down and texting and literally walking into a hole yeah. in the yeah. ground because they're just but, texting. But my biggest one is uh, people driving with headphones on because yeah. sometimes... I mean, you pe- hear people with their car stereos up. What about Bluetooth so, headphones? <laughs> yeah, but no, what I'm talking about is having that loud... the, the noise right in your ear... Especially yeah. with a lot of the noise cancelling technology yeah, yeah. now, yeah. you can't hear shit like you can't hear a fucking police car or an ambulance coming behind you. Yeah, and people just are so oblivious these days. Or a car like honking at you, going yeah, yeah. You stop at the lights and you're caught in a song and you're just like mind your own business. Next thing you know, you fucking mm. it's like lights green, and everyone's fucking driving. That happened to me yesterday um, at the traffic lights on Sterling Highway. Uh, a guy was just like, "Oi." Wind, like wind your windows down and I, I was blasting hip hop <laughs> um, but I, it was true I couldn't hear the tick, 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 tick of my indicator and it was on for like 15 minutes yeah <laughs> <laughs> the whole way down Sterling Highway he's like your indicator's on and I'm like oh fuck I apologise but he actually yelled at me like <laughs> from the other lane um, I do, do that like I uh, see people with the indicators on I'm like how do you, how do you get their attention yeah. to let them know that the indicator's on I was without driving, scaring them yeah without the, scaring them like yeah. you drive along I was this, coming up the freeway and this guy in this four wheel drive his indicator on for like five minutes up the freeway yeah and I was sort of pulled alongside him like mm. yeah, look look over here look at me look <laughs> at me I'm trying to tell you something and he's kind of like yeah. I think he saw me he's like I'm not gonna why is this guy looking at me why is he looking at me <laughs> and then he realised and then later on I know he's turned his indicator off and yeah, well, they're, they're they're way less inclined to look at you at the traffic lights because they immediately it's just a defense mechanism. But do you get? The, do I'm not going to turn around. Do you, do you get that? Like, if you realize that you've been driving with the indicator on, hmm. that kind of like a, a shame and embarrassment. Yeah, kind of like oh fuck, like you feel really bad about it. Definitely, there's yeah. all these poor people like giving me way <laughs> the whole time, yeah. and before they realize, oh, um, he's not actually turning. But, um. Driving to me, it's so fickle. Like, we trust everyone to drive properly every day. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And just uh, the, the slightest wrong thing. I mean, think about it. Everyone is relying on the other person to do the right thing. Yeah, yeah. And the reason I say it's fickle is at any moment it could go wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't, it's, it could not even be your mistake, but someone can just run into you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Especially because so easily. But we, yeah, like, we trust every day that we hop into a car that everyone's going to do the, the correct shit. Yeah. And, like, at any moment, they could totally not. Yeah. I think, like, I, I have, this is the problem I can admit to. Um, okay. I, I, I'll toot my horn. No pun intended. Seeing we're talking about driving cars, um, I I feel like I'm a confident driver. I'm a good driver. Yeah. You know, I I drive many different types of vehicles. I have license for different types of vehicles. Um, that I get to a point where when I'm driving, I can tell. Oh, like it's kind of I feel it's sixth sense. I'm probably everyone's like you're 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 a dickhead, <laughs> but almost like you can tell what someone's about to do. You can tell when someone's about to change the lane. You can tell when yeah. someone's going to do something. Like well, that. I call it car body language. Yeah, essentially, it's yeah. like you can, you can judge what they're doing. You can, I can even tell when someone's like a little bit fucking drunk. Yeah. Like yeah. immediately you can tell. Yeah, because uh, he's driving like me. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, or, or, well, yeah, you're right. Their intentions, because you can see him lean in mm. or. And, but, but then what, what happens is not intentionally, 
but I become a bit of a I can become a cocky driver. Yeah. Because I can see, okay, that guy's he's getting ready to go in that lane, I'm gonna back off and jump into that lane. Yeah. And I sort of like I do a switch and I, if I'm turning and I see someone come through, I can tell, okay, you know, with spatial awareness that he's gonna be past that time. So I already start moving. And I'm kinda of like one of those people that probably moved too soon. Yeah. Or almost in a way that I I feel bad about it because like you're saying, you don't know what other people are like driving. Yeah. So to them, they not, might not be so aware. You know, this is me sounding like a fucking <laughs> arrogant cunt when it comes to driving, but yeah. you know, but I, I feel like I can preempt these certain things. Yeah. So I'll, I'll come out of a thing and other people will be like, oh, they didn't, they weren't expecting it. But well, if you're paying attention, <laughs> if you're paying attention, you'll know ex- what's going on. Right? Yeah. Um, so what you you jump the gun a bit, like you go okay I know what you're gonna do and then you yeah make, make a move. I, I guess in a way I, j- I jump the gun, yeah. but I do it in a safe way. I'm always cautious about. It. I know yeah yeah like I'm saying like I say you know I'm I feel like I know what's gonna happen and I've I I've never been in a car accident. Knock wood, touch wood. Mm. Um, my car looks like otherwise. <laughs> um, but that's that's never been an actual vehicle accident. On yeah. the road, everything. My car looks like shit. It's got dents down the sides because of uh, years of poor judgment and... Years of parking in that secret car park. Secret car park with very tight turns. And on Murray Street. On Murray Street. Um, and Is one, that, do you remember the secret I car park? I remember the secret car park very, very we well. Used to par- <laughs> <laughs> we used to park there all the time. Yeah. It was uh, just adjacent to the Bank West branch on Murray Street. Is that right? No, it was behind. Behind the bank. Behind the bank west branch. Yeah, in the little al- tiny alleyway. little alleyway. You would not even, you just drive straight past if you didn't know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it had these, um, what do you call them? The the pillars. Bo- uh, pillars or Bo- bollards. bollards yeah. Things, yeah. Well, well, there were, there were the bollards, which they had taped like foam around it because they knew everyone yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. was smashing, like <laughs> grinding <laughs> past but it. But sometimes it get, it get got a bit twi- <laughs> Tight. Yeah. Real tight. Real tight. I would probably have to set aside 15 minutes to get out <laughs> because you'd have to do like a seven point turn. Yeah. But I used to, um, if we if we were playing at amps, I would load in and try and get a spot there. Yeah. Like you load and then, in and then fling it over there. And, and then walk up. Yeah. Yeah. That way you can avoid the, the hell that is getting out of amplifier after you play. <laughs> yeah. Play yeah but show. no. Uh, yeah. But so as I'm saying, you know, my, my car looks... Completely yeah. shit because it's dented to crap. They've all been my own fault, not not interaction with anyone else, like no other yeah. driver interaction, just myself. So I I'm happy about that. Um, except for the big dent that the fucking Caltech servo put in my car because I parked it next to one of their signs, you know, like the advert signs on a windy gusty day, and the door blew open and smashed into the side of my car, put this nice dent down the driver's door. Uh. That I didn't do that. Someone else did that, and I was pissed off about that. Yeah. But yeah, I've never been in a vehicle vehicle accident. Vehicle. Yeah. I've come close. I've hit someone before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this so plan's the moving. Is like, oh, it's okay, Daryl. It's in a really plan. precarious spot. This uh, fa- <laughs> this fake Kmart plant. Fake? No, that's that's real. Oh, it's yeah, real. It's Sorry, yeah. yeah, it's real. Um, I hit someone once on my P plates. Um, it was on the corner of. It was in Maya Reed. Do you know Mega Music? Yes. That corner. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, she had stopped abruptly at a yellow light. Because you know when you think, oh, they're going to go through, mm. it's, there's plenty of time, but they s- like slam on their brakes. Yeah, yeah. And it was a hill. I was still rolling down, and I smashed into the back of her. Turns out she was an ex-cop. <laughs> So she was like really stern and she's like, I have a child in the back seat, which is true. Mm. And I was like, damn, sorry. Um, but I thought you were going to go. Her car was fine. My whole, f- my whole front bumper was fucked. So. <sighs> but because she had a four wheel drive with yeah, a yeah. big fat bull bar. Oh, just uh, went sorry, straight, a, a tow bar. tow bar went straight through your bumper. Yeah. So the tow bar was like touching my engine. Like it went right in. Yeah. Um, but I managed to get a new bumper, but. That was the first kind of proper accident I've been in. I've had a lot of close calls, like plenty of close Mm. calls, but never, never like a. I I had one uh, not long ago coming down Wellington Street here. Now, 
I'm actually trying to work out now if I was in the wrong or not. You probably were. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I probably was, being an arrogant fucking driver that I am. But I was coming down Wellington Street and the light was light turned yellow. And I was actually I was going 10 k's under the speed limit because I think it was like 9 o'clock at night. No other, not many cars on the road. And I'm not going to, you know. So, I was 10 k's under the speed limit just going through. Uh, the light turned yellow. And I saw, you know, saw, okay, I've got plenty of time. I'm not going to the speed limit. So, I kept going f- through. This other car was coming opposite, like in the other direction, but turning. Yeah. So, they were going to turn in front of me. Um, they obviously had the same idea. The light's turning yellow. They're going to keep going as well. Yeah. So, they came through the yellow light turning in front of me as I started, as I went through the yellow light. And we both just like, I, I just saw it coming. It turned into slow motion. He's just, just out of nose coming. And I just put on my brakes. He did the same. We just sat there almost like that far apart, nose yeah. to nose. And I just looked up and we both sort of looked at each other like, oh, well, uh, oh. so then I just sort of just went around and kept going and he kept going the other way. Yeah. Um, it's so, not like, <laughs> so it was more awkward than anything. It was more awkward than anything, yeah. Um, I mean, it was it, not like it, at speeds it could cause any kind of, yeah. You know, damage you know we both had plenty of time to yeah. apply the brakes and shit but then i'm sort of thinking to myself well you know it's a yellow light you're meant to stop but no you're meant to proceed with caution yeah but technically if i'm going straight i've got right away yeah. and someone turning is meant to give way is that correct yes yes so the person going straight always has right away yes yeah so, so either right away but they obviously they assumed that i was going to stop you were going to stop yeah for the yellow light yeah but so was I was I in the wrong for proceeding through the intersection? It's kind of a stalemate. Like both mm. both parties are neither right or wrong. Yeah. I think you both just assumed one the other person would be doing something. Yeah. And that didn't But happen. at the same time, like, yeah, and I drove off and I thought to myself, Well, I didn't do the wrong thing, but I felt really mm. kind of bad about it. Instead of seeing this person like because I had like a four wheel drive, so they were sort of looking down on me yeah. in my shitty beat up car, <laughs> going, Well, this is kind of doing I'm like, uh well I don't know. But when you, th- when, when you think about it, how, how close is too close to the red light? You know what I mean? Like, where's the window of opportunity? It seems like they throw that into... Well, it's that whole, you know, proceed with caution. Yeah. Um, again, I think it's based... It, that becomes something in, in skill in driving, mm. where you have to, you're able to judge distance, speed, and time. They're essentially the three main components of approaching an intersection is your speed traveling, the distance you have to reach there, and the time it takes to get from that distance to the next. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, if you're going at the speed limit, let's say 60, you know, stopping speed at 60 is quite considerable. Um, if you're coming up to the intersection and you see it turn yellow as you're there, it goes straight through. But if you're a fair distance and it turns yellow, then yeah, you want to realise, okay, I'm not going to make it. It's going to turn red before I get there. Therefore, I'm going to stop. Yeah. But I see so many people just, and they'll they'll go. They'll keep going and the light turns red while they're in there. Yeah. It's fine because you've got a couple seconds before the next light, before the green mm. goes the other way. But if you had someone turning. In that, yeah. And the situation that I was in yeah, where there's yeah. someone coming that way, you, yeah. Hmm. Driving's fucking dangerous. Driving is fucking <laughs> dangerous. Well, that's what the, my point before was. I'm amazed every day that we follow these rules. I'm amazed that there aren't car accidents every, like, five seconds, basically, is what the, I'm the saying. Fuck, there is. Well, there is, but, I mean, to oh, to, su- no, to to survive a lifetime without dying in a vehicle yeah. is pretty good. Yeah, well... You know, like, when you think about it, yes like, no, so, okay, no, no. so See, much can go wrong. Yes, but at the same time... Driving is not that hard. Driving no, so. a car is not that hard. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's common sense, really. If you know how to drive a car, yeah, and you understand common sense and the basics of speed, time, and distance, not a problem. Yeah. Um. Even if there's someone on the road that doesn't know that, if you can work that out, then yeah, it's not a problem. Yeah. But, 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 and I get so fucking angry. I get so fucking angry about it when I hear about the the deaths on the roads in WA. Yeah. I mean, last year, I think we had 150 or 
153 is the number that's coming into my head. Yeah. Deaths on the road. We had like three people die in the span of a week. Yeah. Fucking driving. Some of them up up north, um, two trucks colliding. Some girl down, I think Mandra Way, went around a bend too fast. Yeah. And I just, it, it, it's sad and annoying. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying anything you know, like against those people. Obviously, you know, uh, condolences to those people that get caught in that kind of thing. But ha- like, fucking why? Yeah. I guess you. It's almost one of those things where you'd have to see the context of mm. the situation. Yeah, yeah. It's probably a lot more complex, and I don't think they. Well, obviously, nobody means to do that, but maybe the situation was so perfect that. There was no way out of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, you're right. A lot of it can be prevented. Yeah. Um, but uh, now, in my thirties, like people at speed just piss me off. Yeah. Like when you go <laughs> when you're going the speed limit and they're like, <laughs> like next to you. Yeah. Oh. And you're like, why? Oh, okay. Like, oh, so like weaving, oh. We- weaving in and out of the traffic. Like but, why? But like, but um, it uh, blatantly and almost intentionally through breaking speed limits. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of construction on the freeway right now uh, between Canning Highway and the Narrows Bridge mm. where that whole stretch is 80k an hour. And I've had... I'm going at 80k an hour and I've had cunts drive, like flinging in and out of traffic. So, I'm doing a BMW flying up behind me, yeah. cutting next to me and there's like a big truck in the next lane and he just darts in front of me behind that truck like 110 fucking K an hour through an 80 fucking zone. Like, they're the cunts that I want to fucking ram off the road. Yeah. Like, how how do people get away with that shit? Yeah. You know, the, uh, I'm sure there's, I hope, you know, there's plenty of fucking security cameras up and down the freeways. Yeah. But surely there's someone there that's clocking number plates and those cunts are getting, what, what, speeding fines. Yeah. You know, they, should be, <laughs> they should fucking lose their license. Yeah. Like, I, 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 it, that, it pisses me off. I just don't see the point. There's no point. Why? But Why? I guess there's an element of thrill-seeking, or they don't give a fuck, or, yeah. like, okay, every now and again, there'll be, there'll be a genuine reason. No, 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 I will, I will cut you right fucking <laughs> there. No, no? Okay. So, it, what if, like, oh, my, my... Grandpa is having a heart attack. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the grandpa is going to die in the hospital and you're going to die on the way there and kill fucking three people on the way? Yeah. No. There is never a genuine reason to break the fucking speed limit yeah. and put other people at risk. But Never. The other side of the coin is, and we've even said this before, we're, we've been guilty of saying this, where sometimes the speed limit displayed is grossly... Too oh, like oh, way too slow yeah, for yeah 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 that's true and it's almost like insulting to the to your like oh, your absolutely, abilities in absolutely. a way absolutely like I I I go on um like my one of my main drives is uh, Mouse Bay Road along the riverside yeah and you know easily that should be a seventy I, no I I that needs to be a variable speed yeah sixty at certain times seventy above seventy after a certain time because yeah. there's times where it's just open and you know, variable speed limits would be great. Mm. But then how do you make a speed sign that changes? Because once you put a sign there that says 60, it stays there. Mm. I usually judge those areas that are too slow by the be- the, the speed of every car in general in that area. Because, like, you'll see some 60 zones and everyone's doing 70. Mm. Which means... But uh, is everyone breaking the rules, yes, or is yes, it, mo- or is yes. it, or is it more of a seventy? What? No, road? no. Like, How is that? The road says you have to go sixty k's an hour. Yeah. Oh, so everyone's driving at seventy k's an hour. Is that right? No, it's not fucking right. Well, it's not. But <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't. I don't. If like, if you want to, if you want to go on law and technicality, yeah. But if everyone's comfortably driving at seventy in that area. And sixty, you get people starting what? to honk at you and overtake you. Then clearly that area might need to be boosted to seventy. I, no, yeah, I get, I completely yeah. agree with that. Yeah, that yes, like sometimes, yeah, 
the drive that's what i mean drivers are aware of their own situation yeah and if everyone traveling down the road can comfortably go at a speed limit that's not written yeah then yes that should be fine but it's not to say that everyone that's going over the speed limit is not breaking the law yeah and one person that's going 60 that's doing the right thing and yeah. other because i no, that i do the same thing when i drive back up from down south up the freeway uh, it's 110 until you get to ah oh, one of those those early roads where the speed goes back down to 100 and i've i've driven up there 110 with people coming around me like 120 130 hooting at me giving me the finger yeah <laughs> Yeah. And I, 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 I can't understand why. Yeah. Because I'm going the speed limit. Yeah. That always happens to yeah. me, yeah. And mm. every, this whole whole argument of keep left unless overtaking. So, and I, I get into arguments with people about this, saying, okay, if you're not overtaking, you stay in the left lane. All right? So, you go speed limit in the left lane. Does that mean that people have the right to break the speed limit to go around you? No. Yeah. No. You're not meant to overtaking is when you can when you overtake a vehicle that's going below the speed limit. Mm. There is What about speeding a bit and then going like dropping down? No. No. To go around. Them? No. The it's actually <laughs> I oh, I I'm ready to bring up the law, but it's it's stated it's written and this is when I learned to when I learned to drive when I got my license back in 84. <laughs> Oh, fucking little, in a Wheaties in a Wheaties box. No, I see what you mean. You, but you, no, you, yes. you should never speed in order to yes. overtake. You can't. Well, it's 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 a law. Yeah, that overtaking you're not allowed to break the speed limit in order to overtake. Hmm. Yet some somehow. People Welcome to the uh, traffic <laughs> traffic podcast. No, but yeah, but no. <laughs> but it's just yeah, it's annoying how shit. Just it is people. They, uh, you I don't know how people get away with that shit. Yeah. 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 And it's true. It, it, and, and, like, people that just go five over are the ones getting fined. <laughs> well, no, five is five. Yeah, well, yeah, five's allowed. No, I think it's something like seven. No, it's not. I think it's five. No, no I mean, like... Uh, it's that grey area of five and that. But. You can go over about... Most speed traps are, like... They give you a 5k buff, a kilometre buff. Yeah. 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 So... I think like seven and above is a fine. But anyway, what else is new? <laughs> <laughs> we just talked about traffic for ages. Um, well, you brought it up, and I got I did, I did, ragey I did about. It I got ragey about that. I did bring it up. Um, but how are you? How's your feet? Um, Google says I have plantar fasciitis. What is that? Um, plantar fasciitis is a Tendon, how do I spell it? Uh, planter, like a, a like a plant, a planter right yeah. next to you. Fasciitis, F A S I T I S C I T I double I S fasciitis. Um, it's like a, a a tendon that runs along the base of the foot that can tear away from plantar fasciitis. Fasciitis, fasciitis, fasciitis. Fas- fasciitis. Yeah. Right. So it's a problem with your like the tendon in your f- in your feet. Mm-hmm. Right. Only the feet. Yeah. Right. Usually self-treatable. What does that mean? Well, you know, they say you know, rest, put some ice on it. Right. So the stuff. it's an inflammation of the band of tissue that connects the heel bone to the toes. Yes. Yeah. So it runs along the base of the foot. How does it feel? Um, like I'm walking on fucking nails and mm. like there's like, it's just being, yeah, it's like, it's almost like a tearing feeling. Like you can feel oh. the, the muscles underneath the foot tearing. But every the, time. the whole surface of the bottom of the foot or just the heel part? Oh, at times it's like the whole fucking foot. The whole foot. Yeah. yeah. The wor- it's, it's worst in the morning uh, when you wake up because obviously the foot's been relaxed. You get out of bed and start moving. It's just like, yeah. ah. Yeah. Um, throughout the day, as it warms up, it gets a bit better. And then end of the day, it's just fucking comes back. Yep. Is there any physical swelling of the foot or is it just all inside? I, I th- uh, When I looked at it, I felt like there was. Yeah. It looked like a bit of swelling, but not 
noticeable. Um, and I've got my, my custom orthotics made uh, from the um, Body Wise Podiatry. Mm. Oh, that's true. But, I, but I've only got them in my work boots, so I can't wear them in my normal shoes. And what, what you said was true. So usually the most severe with the first steps of the start of the day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because it's kind of like the once once you've slept, your muscles are sort of relaxed or yeah set into a certain and position. you kind of go cold yeah and then you got to warm up yeah again yeah. But how do you think you got it? Just from standing? Ah, uh, well, work, well, work obviously. Obviously, work because you know I, I you know footwear I move a lot. Well, yes. Um, I really need to uh, um boycott thongs. In general, yeah. In general, and well, I you could, just short periods, yeah, but not for the whole day. Kind yeah, of thing. but they're the easiest things to put on. <laughs> no, yeah, but they're they, just like they're there, wicked. I'm just gonna slip into them and walk away. But I will admit, yeah, yeah, absolutely. If, if I'm going to the beach or what, if I have a whole day in thongs, it hurt my the heel of my foot really hurts at the end mm. of the day. Yeah, because no. there's, there's just no there's no support. Mm. There's no heel support. Well, actually, I went out to um. Uh, what's that place just down here? City Beach Surf and bought a pair of th- another pair of thongs, but these ones had like a rigid, soft, like extra cushioning that actually has a bit of an arch in yeah. it. And I thought, you yeah, know, this this would be better than my flat Havianas. Yeah. Uh, apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, so it, it feels a bit better. Yeah. But no. Well, you know, we are entering the age bracket where stuff is going to start to hurt. Mm. Um, and I never thought that would happen to me, but it's happening to me. Yeah. <laughs> I also find I need frequent naps. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, now that I think about it, that's always been the case. Yeah, well, it's it's getting to a point now where having a nap is like a luxury. That like if you if you can well, find that time, like an hour, just to nap. I appreciate sleep so much more. Mm. Maybe because the better part of my twenties, I've just was pretty fucking lazy so but oh the better part of your 30s as well (laughs) but sleep is really important but I find myself loving uh a good night's sleep I look forward to it now yeah 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 who's messaging you oh um uh it's probably Japan or London right yeah EVE online yes (laughs) <laughs> Discord gaming chat. Thank yeah, you. I should. I was thought I'd turn the volume down. Sorry, that's cool. Um, um, but yeah, we we have to start. I'm not sure what the demographic of people would be that listen to this. Maybe our friends and stuff. So, but if you're young, uh, enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> 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 but I think if you remain relatively active, like your work, even though it hurts. Do you feel kind of uh, satisfied when you finally go to bed? Like, it sucked, but I'd rather be doing that than nothing. Yes. Or... Oh, yeah, yeah, would yeah. You rather oh, be, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I spent many years lying in bed to like one in the afternoon mm. doing Same nothing. Here. Yeah. That was like my whole... All of my 20s was yeah. just bands and waking up at midnight. Yeah. Um, that, was, that was it. And now, you know, getting up early and working a whole day and then coming home, uh, it, it makes me want to sleep into one o'clock every day now. <laughs> but I can't. But I can't. Yeah, like I try, like now, 9am is like, oh, I slept in a bit. <laughs> yeah. 9am, fucking s- s- 6.30 and I've slept in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, crazy. Mind you, trying to get to bed early, like just, oh, because it's, it's really hard when you work a long day, you get home late. And you've got so much shit to do, like you're trying to catch up on things. and mm. Well, the, the self-admin, like cleaning, Yeah, actually, cook- maybe, maybe, cooking. maybe that's why people drive 100 down through the <laughs> 80s and up the freeway, because they, they're running out of time. They've got to get home. They've got to do shit. They've got to do their washing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's strange, because you don't feel yourself changing, but you look... It's only like when you look back... At the last year or last five years, and you're like, shit, I think I've not changed, but you know, things are different. Well, uh, um, I wanted, I wanted to say in a way it's maturing, but not really because we still complain about it like fucking children. Yeah. 
<laughs> every time what? every time I complain about something, I immediately get a flash like it immediately dawns on me that I sound like my dad or like yeah. my parents, you know. Yeah. But I uh, I think that becomes the the dream when you can wake up in the morning and still have that thing where you you wake up early, you work the day, you feel satisfied, but you come home and you feel good about it, that you feel excited to do it the next day. Mm. Yes, I think that is the the holy grail. Mm. If you have that, and I don't know, I feel like it should be not easy, but I think everyone can do it to to some extent. Um you know, be fulfilled in what they're doing and not be feeling like they have to go somewhere to work for someone. Yeah. Well, I think... Uh, like I don't know where the answer is. Probably being self-employed. But then I look at self-employed people and they're like... I feel like that'd be way more stressful. And they're like, I have not slept in f- like three years. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Because if they don't work, they don't, they don't get work if they're not, you know constantly doing work to find work and a lot of it goes unpaid as well um Mm. so you've you've been you when you got here before we we set up for this uh podcast it's probably (laughs) actually really bright now um (laughs) you you were hitting me with something about the uh mars rover it uh yes shut down well, they lost contact as of June 2018. And I think they just, they're assuming it's not working anymore. They've lost contact with it. So, um, wait, wait do, do you know which rover it was? Um, there we go. Opportunity? Yeah. <laughs> Mars rover, opportunity pronounced dead after more than a thousand, what? <laughs> well, do you know? <laughs> The opportunity only moved 28 miles in its whole lifespan. Spirit and opportunity by the numbers. Six years lifespan, 124.8 thousand raw images, travelled 4.8 miles. What? I thought thought it was 28. The steepest slope it went up was 30 degrees. Wow. Oh, wait, no, that's that's Spirit. Yeah. And uh, opportunity... Had a 14-year oh, lifespan, 20, 20, 000, 28 miles, 28 miles oh. travelled. So they were expecting them to not work <laughs> as long, but do, do you know what it, actually it, allegedly kept it going? <laughs> the fact that it could go an extra two degrees slope <laughs> upwards? <laughs> no, the fact that allegedly <laughs> Mars is so windy that it was able to blow a lot of the, the sand and dust off the solar panels. So rather than... You know, I think they expected it to last like two to three years. But 14, that's a lot more. Well, that's its lifespan. I don't know how long it actually lasted. No, that long. Was it 14 years it's been up there? 14 years. Fuck off. So before the first iPhone, before Facebook. Oh, yeah, dead after 15 years on the red planet. I didn't even know it was there for that long. This thing was just been sitting there taking photos, taking selfies (laughs) for 15 years. Uh, But, yeah, Yeah. of course, I mean, there's there's the famous... um, Mars photos where they've spotted fucking so much shit on Mars. Uh, well, there's there's water on Mars. Well, I, I, well, I think that's a fact now, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Underneath the surface or mm-hmm. some shit. Um, but I remember ages ago looking at awesome stuff about uh, t- now, a whole tunnel system underneath Mars. NASA confirms evidence that liquid water flows on today's Mars. Hmm. Oh. Liquid water? As opposed to... <laughs> but crazy. Um, yet, I was asking you before about the Mars rover photos. Like, if any of us can even remember seeing any famous... like. Well, it, se- it seems like after a while we just didn't give a fuck about it. I don't think because there's nothing. It, there's I don't think that there's anything remarkable. Yeah. About the images, like yeah, we see it and go, wow, okay, that's Mars. That's a big red fucking desert. 
Mm, looks like they took it in fucking Nevada or something. <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, obviously, I think the first initial thing went, wow, there's a photo of Mars. There's a photo from the surface of another planet. And every um, photo afterwards just looked the same. And we're just yeah. like, oh, okay. After that, uh, that honeymoon period is over, you're kind of like, ah, uh, I think we've seen enough. Yeah. <laughs> but how many thousands, fo- hundreds, hundreds of thousands of photos yeah. over the course of yeah. its lifespan? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. like I said, you know, because it moves so, so, so slowly, every photo looks the same. Mm. Pretty much. Yeah. Apart from the specific bits and pieces. You know, there's a the famous is is that a self like how what is that an actual photo? It's hard to tell. What, isn't what it? took <laughs> what took the photo of this Mars rover on it's Mars? It's a photo of a photo taking a photo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't get a lot of this. I feel like we should have. Why aren't we more? NASA identifies foreign object debris. What? Yeah, fragments from uh, what appears to be not a natural type of material, but... Yeah. No, but yeah, I mean, I think the the famous... This is like the famous panoramic one, mm-hmm. where it's just red and just rocks and dirt. It's just like, yeah. And people saw that alien skull... And they thought, yeah, and they thought they, an saw, they saw they <laughs> saw Bigfoot on there as well. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is, this is a nice big one, but that's, but that's from, what I mean. Uh, but the a- Arizona desert, yeah, but the at, area that's what I mean. At the, ooh, uh, what? No, I'm being banned. No, super, super resolution. <laughs> You're sorry. being banned. It popped up like a really weird looking site. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is apparently the that's the surface of Mars. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, I'm pretty sure this is gonna. We'll get this up on the screen. Yeah. So for people just hearing audio, yeah, we got some stuff on the screen. Yeah, you can do it on the YouTube, but on the YouTube's. I don't know. That looks like a place on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't hold it in anymore. Yeah, but I don't know. That's that's it, everything is the same. Yeah. I mean, this this Mars is not that far from Earth, is it? In the relative scheme of the size of the universe, no, not at all, not very far at yeah, all. I mean, but it, they still argue today where the moon came from, whether yeah. the moon was a rock that collided with the Earth, creating a perfect. No, no, no. Like, oh, oh, I don't. I'm not going to argue about this shit. Cricket, Uh-oh. cricket, cricket. I just, I just um, broke something. Cricket ball. Um, <laughs> you just broke no. something. So either the moon. Was a was an asteroid that came in, hit the Earth, and did shit. Or they reckon it's a part of the Earth that broke off. Yeah. And in the debris, as it slowly turned, the constant rotation created over the ball. billions of years, yeah, formed into a ball, and right. bits and pieces slowly formed into it. Mm. The same way with the the rings around Saturn, all that the ice, yeah, is essentially debris that's getting that's got caught in the rotation, and over the millennia, millions and billions and billions of years, all the ice rings of Saturn will eventually just be consumed by Saturn. Right. Mm-hmm. Apparently, but I can't remember if Saturn is the gas planet. No, Jupiter's gas. A gas um, giant. Saturn is. I'm way out. Yeah. No, Jupiter. Did Jupiter. I say Jupiter? You Which said one's Saturn. It? Yeah, Sa- Saturn has Saturn's rings. got the rings, but yeah. Jupiter's the gas giant. Jupiter's yeah, a, a gas yeah. giant, yeah. So, technically... Technically, you can fly through the planet mm-hmm. because it's not a solid mass. It's just a ball of gas. Ball of gas, yeah. Or, or it could just be a, <laughs> a luminary, a light in the sky. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like... Uh, uh, no, nah, but see... Oh, see... Oh, uh, I'm going to... Uh, okay, now, see, this is where I, I just want to start going down a rabbit hole. But before I do, and I actually... I've been meaning to say this and discuss this especially for many of the other podcasts we have done. Why haven't you brought it up? No, no, no. But no, this is something that's not related to okay. um, planets. But okay. um, the, the term and the idea of uh, argumental fallacies mm-hmm. in which of making arguments without actually validating or having mm-hmm. any evidence. Now, this is something that was uh, uh, presented or... I was informed about, uh, due to my significant other, that's something I have been lacking in 
uh, my argumental fallacies, or that's what I've been doing. Yeah, that's my what argumental you've been fallacies. Doing. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. doing. Yeah, I've yeah. been making arguments without any validation or mm-hmm. evidence to support my arguments. However, <laughs> however, um, I've become. I've started to become a firm believer. Well, not a firm believer. It's more just a a theory that I like to toy with. That nothing ever used to exist, but the more that we focus on it, and the more that we want it to exist, it starts to exist. Yeah. And this, I feel that this works on both the microscopic level and the macro. Is that the thing? The macroscopic yeah. level, like the larger yeah. environment where, in, especially in quantum physics, where people start delving deeper into what can be the smallest, you know, from atoms, neutrons, electrons, um, quarks, the God particle. And the deeper they go, the more they look, they keep finding something else. They keep finding it. The same way we do when we start looking in the universe. We look at stars, planets, galaxies, universe. With The further out we go, we keep finding stuff. And what if the only reason we are finding things is because we're looking for them? Yeah. That in a sense, it's our consciousness that is actually creating mm-hmm. this. Definitely. There's nothing to say that that's not the case, yeah. in my opinion. If you look, we always say we, when we talk about quantum stuff, you know, the observer is king mm. because the observer determines the reality. Yeah. In well, a way. So, I mean, I mean so oh, it's, what, like, what if, what if the intention is that all this dreaming, this, I want to go further, I want to investigate more i want to discover more is inadvertently creating those new things so basically what i'm saying is the key to innovation and evolution is constantly searching it's imagination and imagination i feel and, like imagination and and, and, and dreams it, when, when i say dreams it's like uh i guess in a way What's his name? What's his name? Um, big ups wanting, to uh, big ups. To find more. Big ups to J. R. R. Tolkien. Is that Tolkien? The, yeah, Tolkien, the author of uh, Lord of the Rings. I think it was. <laughs> and the Hobbit. And the Hobbit. Yes. Why did your voice Tolkien. go really high? Because uh, I, w- I really wasn't that confident that it was J. R. Yeah. Tolkien that did yeah. Lord of the Rings. It was either Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I can't say I'm like Harry huge, Potter. Yeah, I'm get not, the fuck not, out. Yeah. Well, fuck it. <laughs> oh, fuck. I, I swear. I thought so. Um. Uh. Daniel Radcliffe walking through um, Forest Chase the other day. It's probably just some anyway high school. <laughs> anyway, high school. Kid. Um, but the whole yeah, the whole idea that the imagination is essentially a new doorway to more creation and understanding. Yeah, and there's oh, see, I, I feel like I'm not. I'm just kind of going down a rabbit hole without actually solidifying it. Mm. But it was yeah. A lot of these um, J.R. Tolkien and um, Lewis C. Carroll, uh, author of Alice in Wonderland, um, essentially presenting these fantasy stories in a way of saying, look outside the box. Open your mind. Look at something. Look at it in a different light. And not just writing a story because it's fun. Yeah, well, they they created worlds. Yes, within worlds within yes, the exactly. story. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's almost like it's so well fleshed out that this could be real people. Mm-hmm. Like it's to that extent. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what well, do you think of it? In a way, it's you know, imagine. Oh. Well, that's that's what isn't there a Johnny Depp movie about that? About an author in the cabin, something like that. But there's a really good vid- oh, there's a really yeah, yeah, I, I'm a, I'm there's a really good video game that I really like called. Alan Wake, who is about an author. It's very S- Steven Spielberg-esque, but basically the idea is when you write something or write a story, there's nothing to say that you haven't created an mm. e- ecosystem yeah. where the, those people are actually alive. Wow. So, uh, well, you think about it on another level where people have become so obsessed with these... Uh, other fantasy stories 
Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, even the fucking Marvel Universe, if you think about it, yeah. that some people become so caught up in it that they start to live in that mm-hmm. and believe it themselves. Yeah. Like that becomes a, almost, I don't know if it's a, a mental issue or something like that, but <laughs> it almost in a- It kind a, of is. In a brainwashing way where to them, to people that are so invested in these ideas- that yeah. to them it actually mm. exists. I actually think that all all the authors of those amazing works of art are a little bit fucking crazy. Mm. Like you, they, you can't be like a regular, well balanced person and write that stuff. Yeah, you've, you've got to be obsessive. Mm. You've got to almost be a little bit crazy. Yeah, yeah. or or they've got a agenda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, well, no, um, no, well, well if, if if people are listening, look up something called the hyper sigil, S I G I L. Hyper sigil. Hyper sigil. I'm gonna look it up myself. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm listening. It's an idea that, uh, in order to facilitate what you want in life, you have to almost uh, conjure it from a creative standpoint. So, you could actually write a story about how you want to live your life and it can actually come true it's a, an amazing concept um <laughs> hmm okay that's cool right. but it's it's a uh, allegedly like what a lot of comic comic book uh, artists will use it's the idea that um you can actually bring these characters to life simply by writing about it, but it's crazy. Oh, I've broken this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you broke it. I broke it. But oh, I'll, I'll figure it out. Didn't, um, didn't Stan Lee pass away recently? Uh, it was a couple of years now. Wasn't it last year? No, it was like re- really recently. No, last year. Last year. The year before. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, it was last year, as in 2018. Yeah, but not like. Couple of years, yeah. yeah. But oh, but see now, I, I want to go back to November, this, November. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. not that long ago. Yeah. Um, but I want to go back in onto that idea of the conscious thought creating things. Yeah. And now, and this is this is why because oh, this is gonna sound so people are just gonna be like, you're fucking retarded, <laughs> retarded. <laughs> But the other day, I was driving a beautiful sunset. Like there's clouds, so the, the sun was reflecting off the clouds. It had this really... You walk outside, the sky was sort of orange. It just had this weird orange hue to it. And this beautiful, beautiful, huge double rainbow. A beautiful double rainbow. Two rainbows just next to each other. Now, I don't know if it's a fucking Mandela effect, <laughs> but I swear to... Fucking, not going to say the word, that I'd never in my life had seen or heard of a double rainbow until that viral video that came out of the guy going crazy about a double rainbow. Mm-hmm. Ooh, this is, this is, I, this I, is unlocking a very deep rabbit yeah, hole. Yeah, but I, I yeah. swear, I cannot at all. You know, with that video, when did that video come out? The double rainbow video. That wasn't that long. Um, Let's have a look. Uh, I damn, I, I can't work out how, why this video screen recording. That's okay. I'll look it up for you. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's, but it's almost like every single rainbow I see now is a double rainbow. There's two fucking rainbows around uh, 2010. Shit, so that's not long. like eight, eight, eight nine eight, years. Yeah, eight, nine years, yeah. But you're right. I, I never in my life recall going, or my dad saying, that's a double rainbow. Like, I yeah, never, seen two never, rainbows. never yeah. have seen two rainbows. Oh, Mate, I, 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 I wish that if, if this was live, I'd be putting out callers, call up, tell us, have you heard, have you seen double rainbows before that video? As a child. Fucking, we, when this video gets on YouTube, comment, fucking share, tell us, <laughs> tell us, tell us, have you seen a double rainbow before that viral video? But, so, yeah, it, as a child, if anyone has seen a double rainbow before... And can actually recall it? And can recall it, can you tell us about it? Because this is a really... Because the Mandela effect is a... 
It's but becoming a big thing. Let's gloss over it. It's the idea. It's kind of a... I wouldn't even say it's a conspiracy theory, but it's a theory that... That people... That you remember something different to the way it was. Yeah, but... That, but the Mandela effect conspiracy side is saying that things in the past are being... Changed. That, al- altered. Yes, you could... You changed. Could, yeah. You go down the real conspiracy hole and say people call it a glitch in the Matrix, as if... Something's being changed. Yeah. Like a reset. You know, the classic Matrix movie where he sees the black cat and it does it glitch or he sees it twice. Yeah. Deja vu. He sees the black cat and then the black cat. Deja vu. Yes. Um, and then so, there's yeah. become starts. Arguments have been breaking out of people remember something happening one way. Others remember it happening another way. Yeah. I think we talked. We did it. We talked about this on the podcast. There's, didn't we? And there's, there's a Many lot. Times. Now. When I watch the Mandela, you can look. You guys can look it up. Um, the reason they call it Mandela effect is because people thought that Nelson Mandela died in jail. Yeah, and others remember him being released. Yeah, and dying years later. And the, yeah, so which it's, is the right way I remember it. The, you could see it two ways. Obviously, one is that we're remembering things wrongly, or we're looking at a piece of media that was incorrect. Mm-hmm. And then when we look at the fact, in quotes, it's different. Yeah. Other people think there might be something deeper where reality itself is change, changing. Yeah, because... Or something is changing now, the, the past. If you talk, like, certain Mandela effects, like, you know, there's a classic line from Jaws, um, we're going to need a bigger boat, or you're going to need a bigger boat. Yeah. Um, but as, as certain images, certain movie titles, book titles... Um, but the thing is, when you go to find this information... It's almost one-sided. It's almost like a perfect argument saying, well, that, that's what it is because everything we know, all evidence and proof we have says this. Yeah. But then why? Why are people arguing that? Yeah. Why do people have a different memory and why is it a collective memory? Mm-hmm. Why is it not just one person going, oh, but I remember that. Oh, well, you're crazy. But why is a, mm. a large amount, a group of people remembering mm. something? Unless... Now, this, began, this is going to be my devil's advocate, unless it's becoming uh, not not like a, uh, a f- not a fad in a way where, well, oh, that's it's kind of not intentionally. I'm going to pretend I'm going to believe in something else because it's you know it's fun because the other people don't, but it's almost like uh, un- unconsciously other people jump on board. Mm-hmm. Because they they start it's almost like a bit of brainwashing, where they start questioning. Oh, oh wait, they don't remember, and then they start switching. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see what you mean. Like they they're only thinking about that because of the seed has been planted. Yes, exactly. In their head. Yeah, yeah. But there's so many. Like I probably can't. We probably can't go through mm. all of it. But there's <sighs> hundreds. A lot of it revol- okay, no, no. A lot of it revolves <sighs> around. I'll just say really quickly. A lot of it revolves around either big historical events or uh, popular culture, yes. like media, movies. Yeah. Okay, um, okay, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Things like that, yeah. Now, as I was saying, you can search the information. You can go to Google. You can mm-hmm. find any photos, images, and it's always one-sided. One sec. Which people believe is part of the problem. Yes. Because... Information so can be changed. Inf- information now, you could literally, like, look at Wikipedia. If the general consensus is large enough, they'll alter the history of yes. that fucking event. Yes. So, it's... Things can be changed now so easily yeah. because everything is digital. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you could say Tiananmen Square doesn't exist, which is what they do in China. The the tank man, the guy yeah. that stood in front of All the tank. All they have to do is erase that man out of every single yeah. photo and, they go, and it never happened. And and, <laughs> and and tell the people, the the, the next generation, no, that didn't exist. Yeah. No, but I remember a man yeah. that, that stood up against yeah. attack. No, that okay. never happened. Yes. See, this is where, where yes. how... Okay, okay, but... Yeah. but yeah. Okay, so we talk, you can change, you can change everything on a computer. You can change the images, you can change videos, photos, but what you can't change is what you see in the fucking sky above your head. Yeah. A physical... Well, okay, a rainbow is not a physical thing, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Yeah. It's something actually there. Yeah. So, how come almost almost every single time now you see a rainbow, there's two of them? Yeah. It's almost so distinctly you can see two rainbows. Mm-hmm. 
I never remember it before that viral video. That's all I'm saying. Whether it's now something that's people ha- have created a second rainbow because Ooh. a conscious has started to believe that there's a second rainbow. That so people is, start. That is deep as shit. No, that's what I mean. That's the whole idea that I'm talking about. Things are being created through mm. a collective conscious. So, in a way, you're kind of saying that in in a way, we could create a new phenomenon. Exactly. But no, no. But this yeah, is- Think about it. If we created a viral phenomenon and, like, captured something on a video that never used to exist, but we just pretend... Let, let, let's say we edited something yes. to say something existed... And the whole everyone con- consciousness, to believe it. Uh, yeah, the the all the the energy of everyone believing that could be true creates a new phenomenon. Mm-hmm. So, such as delving into quantum mechanics, quantum yeah. physics, and mm. looking deep into the smallest atoms, the smallest quarks, because mm. people are looking for it. They know there's got to be something. They keep looking, keep looking. They find it because they believe it's there. The yeah. same way that you can go far out into the universe, looking, 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 and find it because because you look, you want it yeah. to be there. Yeah. So that is fucking. That's that's yeah. where my my brain goes mm. at times. Yeah, you could even extend that, and this is going to be real, real fringe, real tinfoil hat shit. But you could even say the nature of certain cloud formations. Oh, that's always been there. But I don't remember clouds looking. Some some days I look at the the stuff above, and I go, I don't remember this sort of. Uh, no, I genuinely don't. I genuinely okay, I'm don't gonna, remember I'm, I'm gonna these s- these huge like misty streaks across the sky. Yeah, I don't. I but I want to spearhead that mm. because I'm a firm believer. Maybe not a firm believer again. But <laughs> this is something I toy with. Um, the 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 seasons the, the our calendar doesn't line up with the, the seasons, seasons anymore. anymore. That that's yeah. a big one. Absolutely. Yes. And, um, the, and the the second thing is time dilation. So time yeah. time speeding up. That's a big the, one. The whole, everyone everyone believes that everything is not constant. Nothing is constant. Mm-hmm. Not even the number pi is constant. Yeah. Well, I think it's always constant, but it's not exact science. Yeah. Um, but we talk. Oh, okay. Damn, I wish I uh, I want this to. Oh, oh. <laughs> Hang on. What? Because now this is okay. So I'm going on about the weather patterns changing, and this is actually a big thing that um an argument that's not an argument but something's been popping up is the the magnetic north of the Earth is shifting. Yeah. the The North Pole is no longer in the North Pole. It's somewhere. <laughs> It's somewhere else. It's, it's moving across the planet. Um, uh, here we are. Um, uh, this article here. I've got to bring it up my phone. Oh, yeah. That's all right. Magnetic North is cruising towards Siberia, puzzling scientists. Uh, it has drifted so far that scientists made an emergency revision to the world magnetic model. Wow. How far? Um, so Siberia uh, from the North Pole. Uh, da, 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 da. I did see. Okay. Well, f- for the most of the 20th century, it has moved about six miles per year. In the 1980s, it began speeding up, reaching about 35 miles per year by 2000. In 2015, when the last WMM was released, it showed to 30 miles. It had slowed to 30 miles per year. And the WM released that year was based on the presumption that it would continue slowing. But since then, the poll has picked up the pace again, putting the w- WMM so out of whack that an update was warranted. So, this magnetic point on the planet. Now, this okay. So now, this 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 is kind of a whole almost debunking a flat Earth theory because in order for this to work, it has to be a sphere. Yeah. Now. The Earth is a ball that rotates on an angle, right? So, it sits on an angle and it spins around on an angle. 
And as it spins, it's moving, right? Now, I was always under the impression that the magnetic north sits there, like on the top of the ball. Mm-hmm. For some reason, which, I, which is not perfectly center. Yeah, but of see, the I, I'm not. Um, I'm not a scientist. I don't know this. Like, I thought where it spins, the north and the bottom, the sort of two points of the axes, was the north pole, south pole, and that's where the magnetic field was. Apparently not. Apparently, a magnetic field sits up. Oh, the magnetic field is moving around. Apparently now. Yeah. According to the fucking WMM world fucking, uh, what is it? Uh, the, the world magnetic model is a WMM. Uh, so NOAA and British Geological Survey, which ups, update the world magnetic model every five years to aid in navigation. For the first time ever issued an emergency update to the model on Monday because this magnetic field is moving yeah it's not in the same spot so and we all know a, a general compass works on magnetic north so yeah. it always points north now if this magnetic north is moving then north is never going to be the same direction how is that not fucking up everyone's compass all the planes oh exactly that's why they're saying it needs to change it yeah um but apparently that doesn't matter because everyone uses gps now which, which is, is digital. Based, which yeah. is digital. Yeah. Satellites are always going to continue in an which orbit. Is military. <laughs> well, yeah, it's military technology. And yeah. they actually, believe it or not, because we used to use the GPS for one of my other jobs, because it's still owned by the US military, there are times when they'll black out GPS to put Glo- off... Globally? Globally. Holy fuck. To put off um, the Chinese. and Because yeah. it's, it's a military system. Mm-hmm. Everything we have in our phones, GPS systems and a car navigation, that's owned by the US military. Like Clon- uh, Clonos, all that embedded mm. GPS yeah. technology. Yeah. It's running off <clears throat> the... I mean... Uh, it's running off a giant US server. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah, but what... So, what, what they do is they'll throw it off every now and then to, you know, put the Chinese off or put... Because it's, yeah. a, war, it's a war fucking system. Mm. It's a military system. Um, But... Aside from that, this whole, the natural magnetic bit of the planet is moving. It's not in the same spot. And now when I talk about, you're talking about these whole weather, like the, the clouds looking different. Mm. Um, the, the earth speeds up this rotation. Every time there's an earthquake, the axis actually moves. The earth doesn't stay. It, it gets bumped. The, the moon is getting further away from the earth that affects the tides. The sun is growing. The sun is expanding. There's all these natural fucking things that to us, because it's so minuscule, and to us, the lifespan is like, you know, we are, we are fucking unregistered on the lifespan of these planets. But I like to think that the constant, these weather changes, these changes in patterns is due to these massive, massive changes in these things, such as the spin of the Earth, the size of the sun, the moon. Mm -hmm. Or it could just be um, climate change (laughs) that needs to be taxed. Or geoengineering. Geoengineering. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, it could be any of those. I I am open to all of those. Yeah. Absolutely. But But, uh, you can't deny... I, and I can't put my finger on it. Maybe it's just because we are increasingly pulled into this digital age, looking at screens more, yeah. whatever. But when I walk on the beach now and I just take photos of the sky, the clouds, every now and again, something it inside feels, me is telling me... It feels different. This is strange. This is it's, different. Yes. Something yeah. is not... Mm. Like it's not like even like I'm saying something's wrong, but I'm saying yeah. there are changes happening. Yeah. But we even both of us agree that the seasons seem to be out of whack by like a month mm-hmm. now. Yeah, but like now we, okay. we, we've had oh, cold, oh, like oh. cold spring weather yeah. in, in Perth. See now, because now I, I know that people that would are listening, they they could be raging because well, they they probably want to stab us. But yeah. yeah, and and I so <laughs> I'm, I am going to jump on the other side of the fence because. Yeah. Yes, I strongly believe in this 
natural course of the universe and these changes that cannot be denied. That's that's they're scientific facts. Mm. But also, yeah, climate change is a, a, a huge part because when you look at the the site the, the atmosphere above the planet. <clears throat> so, I'm trying to work out how I can demonstrate. Um, I'll use my hands. <laughs> so you know, you take the the um the curve of the Earth, like the size of a ball. As, uh, if people that aren't watching on YouTube is just listening, take a basketball. You know, everyone knows the size of a basketball. About a centimetre, a centimetre from the surface of that basketball is the atmosphere. Maybe two centimetres higher is how big, how high up the space station is. The ISS. Uh, the ISS. It's fuck all. Mm. It is literally just hovering above the surface of the Earth. I think it's... um. Uh, maybe it might be a bit higher when I'm thinking about basketball. Maybe... Uh, it could be... No. Uh, when, yeah, when you think about it, a couple of hundred it's, kilometers. It's it's oh, okay. No, I'm, I'm argumental fallacies. I will find exactly the height of the ISS, um, which also cha- seems to change every. <laughs> oh well, yeah. I mean, that changes because they're, they're trying not to fall. So they're four hundred and eight kilometers high. Yeah, which is from here to fuck. What's four hundred k's away from Perth? Fucking Kalgoorlie, mate. No, no, that's 600. That's I know 600. that because I've got to drive there soon. Um, 400 k's is here Al- to... Albany? Albany? About Albany. Yeah. Okay. That's how high up the space station is above the Earth. Yeah. Um, from here to Albany. So, you drive from here to Albany and you're... The height of the, the height ISIS. Of the, of the space station. Crazy. It doesn't seem that high. It's huh? not that high at all. Yeah. Especially in a rocket. Yeah. yeah. And you, you watch um, old footage of the um, NASA space shuttle. Mm. Floating and they do they do a roll. Um, so I think it was during what was the one that blew up on reentry? Uh, Disco- no discovery. Um, um, I think it was discovery. Yep. Yeah, discovery. But they so they actually did an inspection. They got them to flip and roll so they could look at the the bottom of the space station, the space shuttle. Columbia. Columbia. Columbia, yeah, Columbia and the Challenger. Oh, the Challenger blew up early. Remember, yeah. we actually we saw the bit of a monument to Columbia at um the Space Center in Los Angeles. Yeah, and the the Endeavor was there as well. Yeah, the yeah. Endeavor. Yeah, but <coughs> literally, yeah. And when you see how high they are above the planet, it's fuck all. They're yeah. just hovering above it. So what I'm saying is the atmosphere this invisible atmosphere that's holding all of these toxic gases, all this pollution from cars, from uh, nuclear factories, all this coal and stuff we build up, is being held in by this tiny, thin layer above the planet. You know, there's nowhere for it to really disperse. And again, I'm not a scientist. I don't know how, if there's any part of that that actually does get released through the atmosphere into space and disperses and disappears or whether it all is held in by this tiny film of atmosphere around this planet. So yeah, definitely there is there must be huge effects mm. that the pollution that we are producing is causing on our weather systems and things like that. But you cannot um, put everything on that. Because I think that the natural courses, the movement of the Earth and all the huge forces on the planet, I think are playing a bigger part on the planet itself. We complain about these natural, about these carbon emissions, about this pollution, because it affects us now. Well, it, it affects our living space. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think the changes in the, the um, clouds and the bit of rain that we're getting now is going to affect the planet? No. That's like... It's going to affect us. And I think It'll that, affect us. I think that's that, what everyone's complaining about. That's inevitably what, why I feel people are like super butthurt about it. Because they, in the end, it's they're thinking about themselves. Yeah. You know, like well, the, the, that George Carlin quote, the, the earth will shake off humans like a bad case of fleas. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. And, and we're here going, but I want like a clean space. Yeah. But it's like we've done it. Th- we've done it to ourselves. We, well, that too. But the fact that we always just want a clean place for our children and and, and us, like it's kind of in a weird way, it's kind of selfish. Also, to think that we're in that much control. Yeah, but at the same time, it's, I, it's I don't. Such an ego. Yeah. It's an ego fallacy to yeah. think that we have that much of an impact. Yeah, but is on it, what goes on in the universe? Like, are, are we to blame? I think I, a part of a, the human psyche yeah, is to blame. But what part? The ego. Tell me. No. Tell me. Tell me this now. Hmm. If you had the option to drive. Uh, a solar car or a car that did not produce that sort of stuff. Would you drive it? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. If you had the means to harness the energy of the sun to power your house, would you do it? Yeah. Yeah. If we had these means, if we had these capabilities, if we could afford them, I think everyone would jump that train and be straight on it. Not a worry. But... That's not the way that we... That's not the options no, we have. Because there's too much money involved in all this shit. Way so. too much money. Yeah. So, in the... What I'm saying is... We really don't have... Those means to... R- get rid of... What we see as a problem. As much as we'd love to... Yeah. You know, I'd love to be driving a fucking... Mod, uh, Tesla Model S... Need on a, a battery need a and, charging, and charging my house <laughs> off fucking solar panels. I know. You need $100,000 to buy that car. Yeah. Yeah. It's just not at an aff- aff- affordable price. Yeah. 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 So, therefore, I... Yeah, I agree that, yes, there's probably massive problems with climate change, man-made climate change, I'll say. Yeah. But I don't feel that we are to blame because we don't... We haven't been given those means, those options. It's a big, cor- it's a big corporate giants that yeah. really are running the show. I mean, with, 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 you know, when you buy a fucking plane ticket, you can carbon ops- offset, or you pay a bit of extra money to do what? To give them more fucking money. This but, is the problem. I don't get the carbon offset. What the fuck does that mean? So many sharks come out of the woodwork when it comes to this climate change stuff because they can charge whatever premium they want. It's just not affordable. And at the end of the day, it's basically money that runs the show. Like, I haven't paid a carbon <sighs> offset fee. Uh, Have you? Uh, Qantas Future Planet. That's actually the website. Quanta Futures Pla- QantasFuturePlanet.com.au uh, Commonly asked questions about carbon offsetting. How does flying infect the environment? When we fly the fuel, our aircraft burns, emits carbon dioxide gas. Well, no shit. (laughs) (laughs) Or or does it? Or are they using pressurized air? What happens when I choose to offset? Okay. And it says the answer is, we calculate how much carbon dioxide your flight emits into the atmosphere, and then you use your contribution to pay on an offset project to remove the same amount of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere or prevent it from being emitted in the first place. This, these fucking companies. What? Read the fourth one. Okay, hang on. Hang on, hang on. How, how do I know my money is being used appropriately? <laughs> <laughs> okay, the answer is... That should be the top one. Okay, how do we know my money is being used appropriately? <laughs> answer we only purchase from third party verified carbon offsets accredited under the national carbon offset standard ncos we go beyond the requirements of our accredit accreditation by measuring the social as well as the environmental impact of our offset projects that doesn't even answer the question really but i want to go back to what happens when you choose so you pay they calculate how much carbon offset the plane emits into the atmosphere. So, the fuel that they're burning. Mm-hmm. And they take your money. They take a little bit of a... They take more money than the fee of the, the cost. Yeah. So, you add, you add more money. You pay yeah. more money. And they use your contribution to pay an offset... Pro- I want to read this. And then use your contribution to pay an offset project to remove this... To remove... The same amount of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Now, that's the first one. How, what are they doing? What? How are they removing 
that carbon dioxide from there. Is that Bill Gates's garden hose into the sky? <laughs> Like a vacuum cleaner? Because I thought that was more like a garden hose. We spraying shit into the sky. So, does Qantas have a sky vacuum? No, is that what they mean? They're going to use your money to remove the same amount of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Does that mean that for that fee, they'll plant a couple of trees? No, they're removing it from the atmosphere. How do they remove it? With a garden with a fucking <laughs> Qantas vac. That's literally like... Okay. A, that's literally... Or, or. Wait, wait. That's literally like a guy saying, hey, if you pay me five bucks... <laughs> I'll, like, remove the the carbon dioxide from this area. Yeah. Yeah. How are you going to do it? No, we're going to... Yeah. We we, we could do it. Comma, or prevent it from being emitted in the first place. Yeah. How do they... How do they prevent it? If the fuel is being burnt... That same amount of fuel is being burnt. Yeah. So, how do they remove it in the first place? Exactly. No, they prevent it from being emitted. That means they take your money and they don't... And they, they take your money and they cancel the flight. <laughs> That's how they remove it in the first place. They cancel the flight. How Therefore, the plane doesn't fly and it doesn't burn the fuel. But they've still taken your money. This is all like top tier <laughs> s- scam shit. Like, I, I, this is the thing. I believe in... I, I will happily... So, that's, try, that's, wait, hang on. I'll, I will happily uh, do what it takes to have a cleaner planet. But when it comes to giving corporations yeah. more money, how the fuck does that help? Just, this question three: do, do 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 Qantas profit from this program? Answer: All of your contributions to our offset program are used to purchase carbon offset credits. So Qantas is taking your money and giving it to someone else. A third, right? a third party. A third party. Yeah. They're giving that money to someone else. Mm-hmm. So Qantas is saying we are not taking your money. Yeah. And you're, you're going to tell me that the people they're giving the money to, Qantas does not own shares in that company? Probably. But even more sinister is the whole carbon op- offset credit scheme. That's a massive fucking scam. It's like, hang on, we're going to base all this these carbon measurements on <laughs> credits and we're going to... I just still can't get over they, rem- they They take your money and remove it from the atmosphere. They remove the same amount of carbon dioxide from that. Fuck that. How do carbon offset projects work? Uh, a wide range I of... I told you. I told you. Reforestation. Yeah. So, for that for that amount of money that, that you give them, they're going to plant a couple of trees. So, which re- then in, in reforestation the, in the would offset it. Reintroducing carbon absorbing plant life to areas stripped of, by development. Okay. So, they take your money and they fly a plane which burns fuel and pumps all this carbon dioxide into the ground. They but take they offset it okay, how by, much, by planting some oh, trees. How much is the offset? Don't know. Well, I guarantee it doesn't cost the same amount as a fucking tree plant. <laughs> tree seed. Yeah. So they take a small amount of that money and they buy a seed and they plant a tree that in 10 years fucking time <laughs> might... No, how long is a, a tree... <laughs> Does a tree take to grow? No, but no, you, no, think about it. Yeah. For a tree to absorb the carbon. I mean, I'm not saying that it's not true yet. Pl- plants absorb carbon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it needs to be a big fucking tree, doesn't it? Ah. How long does a, tr- a tree take to grow that it can actually substantially remove... There's a couple of things that are good. Carbon okay. dioxide from so the sky. habitat conservation. I believe in that. That's Supporting cool. communities and farmers to keep natural habitats intact instead <laughs> allowing... Deforestation to occur. That's literally like, that's literally like saying, "Hey, if you pay me five bucks, I'll burn the same amount of fuel, but later I'll plant a tree." <laughs> but what I mean is, it takes like fucking how many ten, twenty years for that tree to actually make a difference. I know. And they can burn all this fucking fuel. They're gonna need how many fucking trees? See, this is the shit that I disagree. I people often will call me crazy because I have my theories about global warming, but. The problem I have is not the fact that I don't think the planet's warming or the climate's changing. It's all these corporations that come out with these schemes where pay us this or install solar panels on your fucking Mm. house, pay a higher premium, but, oh, you save over time. And it's all the scams that come out of the woodwork when it comes to preying on people's, like... 
mm. um, wanting of a better planet. Like they they come out and they come out with all these fucking weird schemes. Mm. Like, Wasn't there a um, a charity organization that got busted for f- essentially fraud? Or Probably. Tanky? No, I mean, I can't imagine most not. Most charities are fucking frauds, yeah. I'll say that. And it's the whole thing, like, I, I refuse to give money to charities or no. give, but I will, yeah. I'd be happy to give a homeless person a bit of money on the street mm. or take my cl- my old clothes and give them to someone it needs, but I would, I, I, I hate the idea of giving it to s- a something, an organization, a company, something like that, and entrusting them to do the right thing. Yeah, because I feel like that's something that can't be. You you can't guarantee that you can't re- you can't even like follow the money trail of what you mm. like. Where is this really going to? Your admin fees for your staff or to the actual person that needs help? That yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a, a company that was um exposed caught <laughs> yeah like uh, they were still giving. To the to the people that they said they were going to give to, mm. they're giving like fucking ten percent. Oh, fuck like you. give a fuck all to them and tear and everything else. Like you remember the the Haiti uh, disaster in Haiti? Mm, yeah, where all those celebrities banded together. Hillary Clinton started the Haiti Foundation, all that sort of stuff. Mm. Do you know how many millions uh, has been unaccounted for in the Haiti donation? Uh, scandal it's something like millions of dollars they just can't find from that disaster relief and none of it went to the people oh yeah I'm like not none of it and all these celebrities are like creating foundations and all that shit um and it's just like a massive fucking pyramid scheme yeah um but um uh yeah yeah what ebbs it's a tough it's a tough world we live in but at the same time i i don't feel as you know i do feel a bit of responsibility behind it but i don't feel like it's essentially you know we say that we're in the age where we've been dumped with the burdens and problems that past generations have caused it's going to happen What's, to every generation there's a, i think there's actually a bit of a movement or people it's definitely ongoing discussions that people say that you know the early generations have caused all these problems and it's for us and the younger generations to deal with and fix i i half i half believe that yeah no yeah. no yeah yeah i i see what they're saying financially and e- economically yeah, absolutely uh but i feel like the generation after us are going to s- suffer the same shit Oh yeah. Oh that's yeah. the thing. Like the same with this um Qantas planting a tree. <laughs> it's 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 not gonna make a difference overnight. Well if Qantas listen to this. <laughs> oh fuck 'em. No, no, they won't. No. Nobody's listening. No. Um <laughs> oh, no, I'm not bagging Qantas. I love my Qantas points. Yeah. Like, Qantas uh, Qantas is hands down one of the best fucking airlines, not because of Yeah. It just you know, when it comes to Planting trees. <laughs> planting trees <laughs> and training their pilots. And yeah. shit, like everything, quantity the fucking hands down. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, you know, planting a tree doesn't happen overnight. It's not going to make that change overnight. It takes, it's going to take fucking years, yeah, before it makes a difference. So pay me five bucks. I'll plant a tree later. <laughs> <laughs> we've we've got trees here that will suck up carbon all the way from Kmart. <laughs> oh, I love how you were like, does Bill Gates have a, a vacuum? No, he does. <laughs> a sky vacuum? No, no. Bill Gates has got the garden hose. Uh, what? Oh, oh, are you playing me out now? <laughs> oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on what guy? Um, show me. Uh, Bill Gates. Um, <laughs> are you playing me out? <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, uh, t- <laughs> I'm playing you out, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Gates atmosphere hose I've just googled that Oh really? How Bill Gates aims to clean up the planet environment um, There's a great picture somewhere Holy crap That looks yeah, awesome Yeah he's got these big fucking Industrial fucking thing. Massive no, like wind turbine fan Yeah things. but no there is a classic Photo somewhere where he wants to Put a 
like a hose into the sky. Oh, here we are. I think it's part of it. A tethered boom delivery system. Giant pipe and balloon to pump water into the sky. Wow. Yeah. And cloud cloud seeding as oh, well. Oh, yeah. There's, there's clouds coming out of the back of this balloon. But yeah, no, <laughs> that, that was, that's a classic thing. Bill Gates' is, um, sky, sky hose. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, old. Old news. I've never heard of that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Thanks. Uh, MissionCTRL.com.au uh, Instagram, YouTube. Spotify. iTunes. iTunes. Google Podcasts. Google Podcasts. Daryl's on Facebook. Facebook. Fringe Festival. Last week. Final week of Fringe. Yes. Let's... Uh, go see shows. Go support. Go see shows. Go, go drink beers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And remember to plant a tree. That's right. And uh, look up the Mandela effect. Interesting yes. shit. Yeah. Yeah. And Bill Gates' garden hose. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Woo!